Hello and welcome to Bluetooth, where we talk all things blue. And today I talk about Chelsea's second signing of this summer transfer window, and his name is N'Golo Kante. Uh, he's a French midfielder who just came from Leicester City, the champions of England. And, you know, he has joined the former champions of England on a £32 million deal. Um, and you guys will know, or most of you guys will know, that this deal actually happened around three or four days ago, depending on when you guys are watching this. Uh, you know, I, I'm a bit late to upload this, I know that, and I apologize, I really do. Uh, but, you know, just life, busy, but you know, I thought better late than never, so here it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is just, you know, kind of talk about uh, the deal, basically £32 million, five-year contract. Uh, talk about Angola Conte a little bit and talk about why I wanted to, him to join us. Uh, and most of you already know why I wanted him to join us, because I made a video separately, actually, uh, in my transfer wish list midfielders video. I actually said that I wanted Conte. He was on my, he was one of my top priority midfielders in my transfer wish list. So it's great that we got him. Um, interestingly enough, um, Mishi Bashirai, who's the other signing that we've had this summer, he was also on my transfer wish list. So it seems like someone from Chelsea is watching my videos. So hello Abramovich, hello Conte, hello Granovskoya, hello, hello Emanello. Um, if you're watching this, um, yeah, but it, it's great. I'm, I'm really, really happy with this uh, signing. And as I said, he's a 25-year-old player, so he's got you know a lot of years left in him. He's, he's I'd say he's a very quite a young player. He's got a, a long time left in him. I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. Um, he was brilliant, absolutely magnificent for Leicester City last season. He didn't win the Player of the Year award, but he was one of the nominees. I think Mares won the PFA Player of the Year award, uh, probably deservingly so as well. But Kante was a very, very, very close second in my opinion. Um, he was just. Everywhere. He was like Nemanja Matic when we first got him uh, in that first like um, six months because uh, you know, we got him in the January window. So in those first six months, Nemanja Matic was just everywhere. He was just like a wall. He was incredible and Kante was very, very similar to that. And even in the Euros, he performed very well. Um, France, unlucky to not win, um, but you know, he, he did play very, very well uh, for France this Euros as well. Uh, and now... Uh, there's a lot of interesting things to talk about in terms of this transfer. Uh, and the big, big question that people are asking is, why did he come to Chelsea? You know, he is such a hot, in-demand player. Uh, there are clubs everywhere all over Europe, from like Juventus to Real Madrid uh, to Champions League um, clubs uh, like Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, I think there's another club I'm not thinking about. Maybe PSG? I I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on that. Uh, you know, th there are tons of clubs all in the Champions League. You know, and you know, as you guys know, Chelsea finished tenth last season, so we're not in the Champions League. You know, and you know, big, big clubs willing to offer him the money. So you can't even say it's just about the money, because you know, Real Madrid, Juventus, they have just as much money as Chelsea. You know, there's, you know, people are asking why did he come to Chelsea of all clubs? And I even remember when I made my transfer wish this midfielders video. There's one commenter. I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Uh, if you're watching this, say hi in the comments uh, below. Uh, but he he asked me, tell me one reason why Conte would join Chelsea. Uh, and I can't remember what I responded with, but I did respond with something. But, you know, I think I have a general idea why he joined us. Uh, according to him, the player himself, in an interview, he said that he was very, very um, inspired by Conte. And after hearing his speech, after hearing his vision to, to rebuild the club, he was, you know, he was persuaded that this is the right club to go to. And I think, really, the Conte factor was a big, big, you know, uh, factor in that. Usually when players go to a club, you know, I'd say the... Uh, the, the, the generic priorities are number one, Champions League football, if we're talking about top players like Kante. Uh, number two, probably like your wages maybe, or maybe like, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably your wages, something like that. Number three, um, I don't know, something like, and then, yeah, maybe number three, like manager or something. But it seems Kante has a way, he just has a very, I don't know. Maybe he's not telling us something. Maybe he has something really exciting planned that you know Conte knows about, the players know about, but we don't know about, uh, and we can look forward to this season. So you know, it seems like Conte is sold on his philosophy, um, which gives me more confidence in Antonio Conte, despite our preseason game that that was just horrendous to watch. Uh, to be honest, I didn't make a video on that on purpose. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Angola Conte, Antonio Conte. I think they're both going to be... Oh, I just realized their names are very similar. That could have been a crucial factor. <laughs> uh, no, but um, it seems like Conte had a big, big, you know, uh, role to play in this transfer. And what's really, really interesting was, 
you know, everyone was saying, you know, Chelsea don't have the Champions League. We're not going to be able to attract top players around Europe. We're not going to be able to get our transfer targets. Well, we've got Michi Bacuayi and we've got N'Golo Kante. So, you know, those are two pretty big players. And you know, admittedly, Michi Bacuayi, not many people really knew about him until about one or two months ago, probably. Um, but, you know, he is a quality player. And also, N'Golo Kante, he was, everyone knew about him. Everyone wanted him. He came to Chelsea. I'm very happy with that. Um, and really, you know, I think that's it, actually. I th I th <laughs> There's nothing much to say. He's just an, a beast of a player. Oh, let's talk about our midfield, actually. I was going to talk about this. Now, our midfield is shaping up to be a little bit interesting. The players that we currently have are N'Golo Kante, we have Cesc Fabregas, uh, we have uh, Oscar, we have Nemanja Matic, we still have Jonabi Mikel, and of course we have the youngster Ruben loftus cheek So we've got six central midfielders. And you know, historically we played with like a 4-2-3-1 formation for the past, you know, four or five years, uh, for the four or five seasons. So we've always needed a lot of those central attacking midfielders, or central midfielders, um, which is why we have so many. But if we are going to play a 4-4-2, like I think that we're going to play eventually, I know in the preseason we actually messed around with a 4-2-3-1 in our first game, which was interesting to see. Uh, but if we do decide to go the 4-4-2, we're going to need to cut down on our central midfielders. We only need two central midfielders in the first team, and probably two or maybe three more in the substitutes. Um, so, as I said, we have six currently. Uh, I think Cesc Fabregas and Golo Kante, they should definitely be in the first team. I think those are by far our best central midfielders at the moment. You know, Nemanja Matic is an interesting one. There's been lots of rumors of, uh, is Nemanja Matic going to leave to Juventus? There were some rumors that Chelsea is waiting to finalize Kante before we sell him to Juventus. Or there was even rumors linking him to Manchester United, where he reunites with uh, Jose Mourinho. So, Nemanja Matic's position is quite uncertain right now. Jonathan Mikel, his position is very uncertain as well. It's been uncertain for a few seasons, actually, but especially this season. Lots of rumors linking him with, I think, Fenerbahce, the, the Turkish club. So he's another you know, uncertain one. Ruben loftus is he's definitely going to stay with us. He's a big future out of him. He's our academy player. He's the, the next big thing. Uh, and he didn't disappoint last season, so he's definitely staying with us. Uh, and Oscar is another question mark. You know, uh, there's, there's, rumors linking, there's been rumors linking him to Juventus for about three transfer windows in a row now. But, you know, that's still there. Um, even rumors linking him to, to Paris Saint -Germain. Paris Saint Germain. Sorry about that. Um, even you know, there's lots of clubs wanting him as well. And you know, there's even you know between fans. I've been talking to some of you guys. Some of you are saying, or a lot of you are saying, Oscar should leave. And even in my transfer wish this midfielders video, I said that he should leave. But then afterwards, I said he shouldn't leave because he's such a difficult player to think about. Because he, you know, he's only 23 guys. We're 22, 20. He's very, very young. And you know. He's got a big, big future out of him. Lots of years left in him. You know, he has been a little bit. In, he he has been quite inconsistent throughout a t throughout his time here. He has he's had some amazing games, amazing goals, uh, specifically. But he's also had some very, very disappointing performances. So he's a big question mark. So I want to you know leave this up open for discussion, guys. So be sure to be active in the comment section down below. How do you think we should be lining up in our midfield if we do manage to play a four four two? Um, and then, you know, which players would you sell? Because undoubtedly, we need to sell players. And, you know, as I said, Nemanja Matic, Jonathan Mikel, and Oscar. These three players are all being linked, you know, with a move away. Which of these players do you think we should sell? And how many of these players do you think we should sell? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'll just give my opinion right now. If we play a 4-4-2, as I said, Fabregas and uh, Kante will definitely be those two um, bossing the midfield uh, and then the first team. And we're going to have Ruben Loftus-Cheek in the substitute, 100%. This I know to be true, 100 billion percent. Uh, Fabregas may be um, debatable, actually. Some of you saying you're not convinced by Fabregas. I think he is one of the... In fact, I think he is the best midfielder at Chelsea right now. Best central midfielder at Chelsea right now. Um, he's just... I think he's phenomenal. But anyway, and out of Matic, um, uh, Jonathan Mikel, and, and uh, who's his name? Oscar. And I personally think... We should keep hold. We should hold on to Matic, and we should hold on to Oscar. And I know you guys are thinking that that's just way too many midfielders. Uh, by the way, and I'm um, implying that we should sell Jonathan Mikel. We're still only going to leave us with five midfielders or five central midfielders in total. And you guys are thinking that's just way too overloaded. That's going to kill Ruben Loftus Cheek's chance of you know coming on. But the thing is. 
Conte is someone who likes to have a tactical, you know, fluidity, flexibility. He doesn't want to just... He's the type of manager who doesn't just have one set philosophy that he, he forces onto everyone always. In fact, he described himself as a tailor um, in his press conference, saying that he needs to adapt to the needs of the team, needs to adapt to the players and the squad, etc., etc. And you know, even between games, I, I, I know this for a fact, he's a very, very you know, fluid guy, flexible guy. He, he's not afraid to change his tactics in the middle of a game or change his tactics for a specific game if we're going against you know, a specific you know, good team or whatever, you know. He, he's a guy that's not afraid to change it up. And I do think it's, it'll be very beneficial to have that extra midfield reinforcement, especially because if you look at the balance of our team, Angolo Kante is quite of a defensive midfielder, incredibly solid. Fabregas, he's more of an attacking midfielder. He likes to open things up, to get involved, to play. You know, he's a very, very, um, he's got a lot of assists to his name. Maybe not so, you know, last season, but his first season here. Um, so there's that balance there. We know that Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he can kind of play both positions, but I, I want to see him more as kind of that box-to-box -box midfielder. So not necessarily an out-and-out -out attacking midfielder, but someone. If we had, a, if we played a four-two-three-one, he'd be in that two for me. But kind of, you know, like like an attacking defensive midfielder. If you guys, if that makes sense to anyone. Um, and then we have Nemanja Matic, who's similar to Kante in that he's kind of quite of a defensive um, player or defensive midfielder. And then we have Oscar, who is an out-and-out -out attacking player. He's actually incredibly good defensively. Credit to him. He's got an incredible tackle on him. And his sliding tackle is just very, very good. Um, but he is, you know, um, an attacking midfielder. So it's we kind of have that balance going on. You know, we have two attacking midf midfielders in Fabregas and Oscar, two defensive midfielders in Kante and Matic, and of course Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who's kind of a hybrid of both. So I think it's um, it's all it's really good to have the reinforcement just in case someone gets injured or you know we need to, we need to have one extra attacking player on for the last ten minutes to chase the game down or we want to throw in an extra defensive midfielder on in the last 10 minutes to protect the lead. And I think it's just um, incredibly beneficial to us to have um, that kind of depth, that kind of balance, as I said. I think that's the key word here. Attacking and defensive players and reinforcements in both areas. So that is my thoughts, guys. Only sell John Abbey Mikel and keep everyone as they are. Hold on to Matic, hold on to Oscar. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to having a discussion with you guys, like I always love to do. And that really concludes my video, guys. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, uh, stay blue.